So this is where I left my shop. This is awesome. For the past month or so, I've been working on a design that I conceived of about two years ago and have greatly modified in those two years in my head as I came up with different ideas or different requirements for it. Now, I did make a mock-up of this project. It's not normally something that I do for a project. It's just my way of doing it. I don't normally do mock-ups very much. But this one here, I was having a hard time visualizing a couple elements of it that I really needed to see it in true physical form in order to get, get a feel for if it was right or not. And there were actually some changes because of that. The other reason for doing a mock-up is there's a lot of crazy math involved in this project, and I wanted to make sure that I got all that math correct before I committed it to Curly Maple, which is what we're going to be making this thing out of. Now, after I show you what it looks like today, I'll actually go over the way that the design evolved from the form it was two years ago to what it is today, just because it'll give you a glimpse to my crazy thought process, and also it might give you some ideas of just how these things can gyrate in your head. So if you've got a project stuck in your head and it seems like you're never getting it committed to wood, it's probably because you're not really happy with it yet. So give it some time to stew. So I made my mock-up out of MDF just because it's inexpensive and I've got my little stack of parts piled up back here. And it's definitely a project that squares don't like because there are no square angles in this entire project. I mean, you can clearly see that this one here, it's not square. And this one here, it's not square at all. The sides, they're not square. The tops, they're not square. In fact, there's no square on this entire board. In the entire project, I believe there's only about eight edges that are square. So that's the reason why I wanted to try it out first in MDF. Now you're gonna say, you haven't told us what it is yet. And you're right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stack over to the MFT and I'm gonna tape up this mock-up. And while you're watching, you can guess what it is. And then at the end, when I assemble it over here, we'll go over what the project is gonna be. I think this one's gonna be some fun. All right, let's get the tape out and make like it's Christmas. see this is an entertainment center <laughs> now all I did is mock up all these crazy compound angles because we've got eight compound angles as we go around one side and then the mirror image of those on the other side so there was a lot of little mock-up to do and as you saw I made a little mistake on the back uh, where I had actually there's there's a number of math measurements and I took the length for the wrong level yeah. wasn't a real big deal I just added a piece in there and in fact when I go to build the real thing the backs aren't going to be pre-cut because they're going to be sized to something else that's going to be added to this. Now, the design of it, as you're seeing all these faceted sides come down, is its idea is modeled off of a diamond. So you've got eight faceted sides as they go around, 
This facet here tapers down as it goes down. It's only an inch and a half wide at the bottom. It's, in, it's four and three quarters up at the top. And then, of course, everything else. This slants down. You won't be able to see that until you know, we make it out of curly maple and it's got some sheen to it. But there is a small cant to this. From the top of this to the bottom here, it recesses back by three inches. Uh, the back is vertical, however, because the intention is to put it up against the wall. So there are a lot of goofy angles involved. Now, everything came out actually really, really good when I assemble it with tape and a couple of these little bars here aren't quite level, I can see, because I'm getting some rocking. But when they're on the assembly table and nice and flat, everything snugs up just beautifully. So I know that the angles are going to work out just great. And, you know, everything is nice and flush even. So I won't have very much work to do with, say, a block plane to do any corrections at the end, which is exactly what I'd like. Now the design isn't going to be using these little parallel clamps in my house. I like woodworking, but there's a limit of what gets inside the house. So the way that these levels are going to be held separately is with some rods. Now I have some rods back here that we'll use just to demo them. These are some zinc rods. We're actually going to be using nickel rods when I get to doing the real deal, but I got these to sort of prototype what they're going to look like and to decide on the diameter that I wanted. Now there will actually be a base down here that's going to be four inches high, um, and then there's going to be a separation between the base and this part here. So let me get a makeshift base. So these are the uh, Festool makeshift bases because they happen to be the right height. So I'll stick one here and here. And now let me go ahead and slide these rods into position so you get a better idea of what it's looking like. Now unfortunately, the fact that it's MDF and not curly maple and that we've got all these bars here in the way definitely takes away from the look of the project. Now the rods themselves, there's going to be eight rods total, but this will give you an idea. Basically wherever you see a corner edge like this, there's going to be a rod inside the housing holding them all apart. So I've just got these taped lightly into place. So there would be actually another set of rods in the back here and approximately there. Now some of these other clamps are getting in the way of me getting it right into that groove. So there'll be two here and then two in the back. Now I'm debating on the diameters still. I want to take a look at this a little bit further tomorrow, maybe do a better setup for the mock. But uh, I might go, these are half inch. I do have some 3 8 rods to try out. So since I've gone with so many rods, I'm almost thinking that the 3 8 might look a little bit nicer, a little bit more elegant, but I want to see when I put the whole mock-up together a little bit better than with all these clamps that I'm using to show you. Now this design has a lot of interesting things going for it in my mind. The whole thing of all the different angles, it's something a little bit different that way. It's got a nice feel to it too because, you know, you're gonna, people are going to want to touch this thing and it, it just has a nice significance to all the facets that are on the side. The idea of using the mixed media where I've got a little bit of metal going in there along with the wood. These are going to be suspending all the different drawers so there's that element there where it's kind of like uh, you know an unusual way to connect everything together. Now the woods involved, because it's a diamond and you've got that sort of chatoyance of a diamond, I'm going to be using curly maple. So I've got some really nice looking curly maple working here that you know we're going to just take this and wrap it around the sides and all the chatoyance of the curly maple is just going to be really making this glow. We might do a little bit of glazing to kind of bring it out, but for the most part I want to kind of keep it white, but just highlight that tiger maple aspect of it. Now the base is going to be wenge, this little base that's down here, and I'm going to be picking wenge splinters out of my hands for a month. And the last wood involved is a wood I've never used before, it's called etimo. Uh, it feels a lot like it's in the mahogany family, it's light like that, it's got the same type of grain structure but it's just got a great crazy color going on with it. What I'm going to be doing with that board is I'm going to be creating the picture that I'm in the back here. There's going to be a column that goes up in the back. It's going to be slightly tapered. Uh, the taper is going to follow if you were to picture where this diamond ends, where the apex is of those angles, right? So you could, from that apex, you could sweep and make these side angles. I'm going to use that apex to set a location for the taper for that column to go up and then it'll come back down on the other side. Now that's going to be only in the back and it's going to kind of just pinch these boxes a little bit. That's going to be out of the etimo. Now it turns out that there's a little bit of the grain in the etimo that does a swing, kind of swings over. So I was thinking I'm going to try taking advantage of that and resaw that board so that I can take that and book match it so that it'll actually at the top sweep together. So that column will 
sort of loop over on the top and get a little bit of a kind of a tombstone effect at the top, but then it's going to taper down in the middle. Now that column, what its purpose is for is partly it's a little decorative, give it a little bit more color and something in the back, but not too pronounced. But again, this is an entertainment center. These areas are divided. There's room for a component here, here, and here, and of course on the top. All of those have ways for the wires to get into these boxes near the back. And they can then enter the column. And the column is going to allow you to pass all the wires up and down so that they're completely hidden. And then actually the box down here out of Wenge is going to have an opening in the back so that basically you can take all the power cords that you've got and you can tuck them all in there, all the excess cord, any wall warts that you have. They can all go in that box. Now these boxes would be completely useless if they were just boxes that were going to house a little extra AV cable. What these are going to have is I'm going to put a drawer in here at the bottom and a drawer in all of these. Now this one here is pretty wide, so what I'm going to do is, again, using that same idea of going from the apex to make a sweep, I'm going to take the angle off of that to make a, basically a little keystone right here in the middle to divide it up into two drawers. This one here, I'm not sure. I believe I will divide this up into two drawers. I'm not, I'm not entirely certain yet if I'll do that or not. This bottom one will be a single drawer because otherwise there would just be not enough room. Now you have to remember though, these are canted. They're leaning towards the front and that's got to stay the same. So when we make those drawers, we got to make sure that the drawer fronts are also leaning towards the front. Now the flat surfaces on here on the bottoms and tops of these boxes. Now the panels are going to get a maple burl. So I picked up a maple burl veneer pack. These are all sequence matched so that it'll be very easy to create a four-way book match on all the top surfaces of these drawer boxes since you're really going to be able to see it. At least the top one will be completely open, uh, most likely, unless I put something there. It's a horizontal surface, it'll probably get something. But these other sections here will probably have components, but still, the components are relatively small compared to the boxes, so it'll be nice to have something pretty there when you're actually standing in front of it and looking down. Now with the sequence match, we can actually get a four-way book match out of it. So if we take a look here with some mirrors, you're going to be able to see the type of pattern that we could possibly get. That's one where we're trying to center kind of this cloud of a burl going into the middle, but then we can also rotate it this way here and we can put the cloud dead in the middle. So depending on which shelf it is, I might put the burl more towards the outside since there's going to be a component covering up the middle. Now the underside panels are just going to be covered with a curly maple veneer so that it basically looks just like the rest of the box. So that's it. That's the project in a nutshell. Now, I did say I was going to talk a little bit about where the design came from. Initially, my idea was just to make an upside-down pyramid. So it was just going to be, you know, just a regular four-sided box. It's tapered to one side, but upside-down. And it was going to sit on top of a box, or maybe not even sit on anything. It was going to be possibly perched on a wall where it's piercing something that's uh, looking like it's actually holding it there. So that was the first idea. And then I just didn't like it for, I'm not really sure what reasons, but then I started to add sort of, well, let's, what if we were to heavily chamfer the corners? Well, that's what these facets eventually grew into, is to, you know, the, the heavily chamfered, well, even if you're using, you know, four-quarter stock and you join it up on a 90 degree, how much are you going to be able to chamfer away? You're going to end up having, at most, a half-inch revealed. So the facets add a great deal for me, visually, for this project. Now, earlier, the design was going to be that the drawer sections were actually going to be mounted to the wall. So they would be just you know, built very stout inside so that they could just be protruded straight out of the wall. Uh, but I found that that was going to be just way too awkward with any house installation because then you basically have to remove it from the wall to do anything with it or even move it. So I designed this idea using the rods. Uh, I've made some a lot of tables that use floating tops with a brass rod. So I considered brass at first, but the, the brass and curly maple just doesn't really scream too much to me. And I've always loved nickel. I grew up in Canada, and over there they use a lot of nickel in their currency and, and just everywhere. And it's surprising how nickel always shines, doesn't matter how old it is. It's just gorgeous. So it's really going to look good here. This is just zinc-plated rod that I uh, used just for this demo purposes to figure out a size before committing to some nickel rods. So that's the project in a nutshell. It turns out that there's you know, a lot going on on the inside. These are kind of just the skins because we have to build drawer webbing on the inside of each one of these boxes. And then, of course, there's all the panel work to be done for veneering. So I'm going to close this episode here. We've discussed the design and a lot of different aspects of it. And with the next episode, we're going to go ahead and build the jigs that are involved in making all those angles. So we'll kind of jump back in time to take care of that.
So I apologize that the first video of a project can tend to be a little on the more boring side. It's a little bit more discussion, a little more hand waving. But uh, from here on out, we're just going to be going full speed on this project to get it done. Thanks.